Hey guys, Bondo here. We're over here at this uh, pole barn that we're working on. I'll show you what we're up to. Basically, we gotta build this thing up to that height right there. So we got some uh, bank run gravel over here. Got the track, track buggy over there. And the excavator. We're gonna try to build this all up. We gotta take this organic soil out of here around the Bilco door and stuff. So that's what we're up to today. Hey guys, so you're probably wondering what the heck's going on here. Um, we got to this barn and looked at it and the Amish built this building here and they didn't do a really good job at all on this building in my opinion. I've seen the Amish build some nice structures but this thing here was quite the mess. Um, people want to see, you know, I've had people ask me how we prep these barns or how they get prepped because they're going to build a pole barn or whatever. Normally, guys, you would take all this organic soil out. I don't usually do this work. The excavator does it. We have guys with bigger machines than me, and they'll come in and strip all the top soil and clay out of there. And then they will uh, put what I call bank run gravel. I don't know what you call it in your area, but it's basically just gravel which is free draining. It's got bigger stones and stuff in it. You can dig it right out of the ground. So this gravel is found in different areas of, of where we live. And, uh, you know, like, like I said, it packs well and it drains. So you want to get this, um, you know, this topsoil and clay. You can see how sticky this soil is right here that I'm digging. This is like a clay with topsoil in it. You know, this is something that you could grow grass in. You could see it stripping right off there. So we like to have um, a couple feet of bank run gravel in a building like this. About two feet, two to two and a half feet, depending on how deep the clay is. And then that'll get compacted, guys. And then we'll put a finer gravel, like a crushed gravel, or a crushed stone on top of that. And that's what we do our final grading with. So I just wanted to show you um, how we started here with this project. Um, this was done completely backwards, like I said. Um, this is not how you want to do it. You want to have the, um, the, the topsoil all stripped off beforehand. This was a pain in the neck to get in here. Um, luckily, I got smaller equipment. I got my little 8,000 pound Yanmar mini excavator. And that track buggy was handy to uh, dig all this crap out of here. But this could have been done a lot quicker. So uh, we charged him for this, this work. Um, didn't charge him probably enough but we got it we got it done for him he didn't really know the homeowner he kind of did but the Amish said this is the way they wanted to do it stand by we're gonna pour this floor after this guy let's do it Michael Hi. I hear the, I hear the rumble of a concrete truck hmm sounds like it I got buckled in here. <laughs> what do you got oh it's for the color on, color all buckled in your seat <laughs> Like it's a passenger or something. <laughs> hey guys, Bondo here. This is what we're doing today. We got this little pole barn that we prepped last week. Here it is. It is 24 by 32. And we got a little, we built this little entranceway. To, so we can have a better set of stairs going down in. We laid these blocks up. Me and Big Biscuit got that done the other day. So this is it. We're just going to shoot it right through the door. We're going to use the track buggy, but we decided just to shoot it right through the door. Maybe we'll use this guy a little bit to hit in here. No big deal. Right, Biscuit? There ain't no we in me, pal. <laughs> You're wheeling? <laughs> I'm not wheeling, I can tell you that much. <laughs> I know who's not gonna wheel. Turn that laser off, will you? So it doesn't wear the battery out. Here we are, guys. We had to prep this. I don't know if I'll put the video footage of us prepping this, but they put the barn in before the gravel, which is not a good idea. So yeah, we had to put two foot of gravel in. This corner was two foot low if you build a barn like this put the gravel in first make it life a lot easier way to get the excavator inside there what a pain in the neck but we did it as usual we got it done who, who buckles up the concrete color besides this dude here look at 
Just like it's a it's a passenger. Buckle up, bitches. <laughs> Buckle up, Butterfield. <laughs> what do you got? No, I don't eat that. Thanks though. Here comes the mod, guys. Here it comes. Circle T, baby. Rolling in. We got 13 yards of 4,000 pound concrete with a light air mixture in there today. What we got for a driver? Looks like that little Who is it? Is it little Dwight or is it is it Dwight? Oh no, it's Big Rob, huh? Big Rob in the house. Coming in high, baby. Coming in high. There's a wire there, bud. Be careful. I didn't see that. I didn't. That's why I get paid the big bucks right there. That's why I pay myself so much. That's why I pay myself so much. That wire, I seen that. Easy bud, coming in slow. Yeah, you might clear it. No, no, you're not, no, stop. We're gonna have to push it up. Well, do you wanna climb up on that truck and hold it, bud? You gotta pay attention when you're bringing in concrete trucks, guys. You can rip wires right down. There we go, huh? Yeah, it's just cable line. There's a power line, but that's higher. Bringing her in. Yeah, baby. Let's do this. Let's do this, Mike. That's right. Bring him in. Come on, Robbie. Help him out. Come on, bud. Gotcha. No, Mike. Go the other way. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, watch that top there. Oh yeah. oh yeah, look at that baby. Let's do it. We'll see what the mud looks like, huh? I'm gonna wheel that corner there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, that's pretty stiff. That's pretty stiff right there. Okay guys, so you could tell when we started out here the concrete was about a two slump. So we added a little water to it and uh, got it up to about about a five slump. Make it a little bit more workable. So here we go. We're just going to wheelbarrow this area that we can't really reach with the chute. And that was the plan. But as you'll see here a little bit, the wheelbarrow ended up getting a flat tire on us. Um, it started out just a little bit soft and the more we used it, the air just must have been leaking out of it. And then the boys tried to blow it up with this battery powered air compressor thing and that didn't seem to work either. So it ended up going completely flat. But You'll see we ended up um, taking the skirt board off and using the um, track buggy to finish it up in this area that we couldn't reach here. But it ended up working out alright here guys. Um, for you wire mesh policemen, uh, if you pay attention, you'll see me pulling up the wire mesh. I got a hook in my hand there, um, that we pull the wire mesh up into the slab and that gets it off the bottom and up into the slab. Yeah, you walk on it a little bit here and there, but, uh, it stays, it stays up into the concrete because of the stones that are underneath the, underneath it. You can see that hook in my hand right there. I like to pull it up as the guys are dumping it too, or you can reach right down in the mud and pick it up after. Pull it up there. You can see what I'm doing right there. 
So nobody can arrest me. The wire mesh policeman can't arrest me. Anyways, guys, uh, the, the wheelbarrow right here. Yep, boom. You can see it. It's completely flat right here. The boys are trying to blow it up. That was a complete fail. So here we go. We're getting that sucker out of there. Get the track buggy in here and finish it up. Another problem we have with this barn, as you could tell when we did it, it was, uh, you know, they did it completely backwards. The Amish guys did. But they also put the skirt board on. The skirt board, guys, on these pole barns is the bottom 2x6 um, that goes around the bottom. And generally, you pour the concrete to the top of that 2x6. Not always, but generally, that's the way the barn is built. Well, this skirt board was off about 2.5 inches when I checked it with my laser. So... I didn't really want to say anything to the homeowner. I told the Amish guys about it, and I showed them with a level. And um, they use a, a la uh, they didn't use a laser. They use a transit, and I don't know what happened because I used to use a transit, and transits work fine if they're set right. But they were way off on it, which made the doors off and the roof was off. And I told them to tell the homeowner, but they never did. So I had to tell the homeowner and. There wasn't much you could do about it, so you'll if you look close in some some of the shots here, you'll see that we weren't all the way up to the top of the skirt board all the way around. Some places we were, like right here at that man door, there's about an inch of wood sticking up above our concrete. So our concrete was level, but the building wasn't, and you know, like I said, I had to explain that to the homeowner, and he wasn't super happy about it, but there wasn't much you could do about it without ripping the building apart. And I think he was going to make them change the headers and the doors so at least the doors were were uh, level. So, you know, that was just a pain, this this building, the way they build it. Um, definitely don't build it this way. Don't, you know, have somebody build your barn and, without prepping the soil first. Um, that, that makes life a lot better when they get the topsoil and get the gravel in there. But here we are, guys. Like I said, we're just using the track buggy to get to the places that we can't shoot with. Um, there I am again with the hook, pulling up the wire. And uh, Big Biscuit's on the track buggy, just dumping her in there. And you can see Mike, he's going along right there with the laser, and he's putting in the pads. You can see he's, uh, we, were going, we weren't going by that skirt board. Like I said, guys, we're just using our laser. And we're setting wet pads all the way around the perimeter. That's how we did it. So guys, if you look at that overhead door right there, on the right, the bottom of it, you'll see where we put our board in, our bulkhead board to hold the concrete. That's level. We used a laser to level that. You could see their skirt board just to the right of that, the treated board that goes around the bottom. 
that's about two and a half inches higher so if you look we didn't pour the concrete up to the top of it we poured just on wet pads and you'll see that board sticking up let me know what you guys would do about that if you had a building built you know from whoever the amish or just anybody and the darn thing was off two and a half inches um, how would you fix that? You know, we just poured our floor level, but um, I was pretty concerned about it. Like I said, that doorway, I stuck a level on the top of that door header, and in four feet, it was off about a half inch in four feet. And that's how I showed the Amish guy that he was off, and uh, then he believed me. But anyways, let me know, guys, what, how you would have fixed that. You know, would you make them rip the barn down or... Just rip the skirt board off. I don't know because this the roof was on this sucker, so that um that two and a half inches went right to the roof. So, anyways, back to the concrete, guys. We're just pulling this. Me and Mike pulling this off by hand. You can see what we're doing here. Um, biscuit and tuner in the back there, just laying it down, puddling it. We call those guys puddlers. I grabbed one here. Come along. They're just flat rakes, and we're just leveling the concrete out and. Um, Mike's hitting the edge there, checking his edge again with the laser, just make sure he was on. Yeah, and then he takes a stick and flattens it out, and then he'll remag it. That's how he did it, guys. Big biscuit here. He's gonna use the bow float and uh, lay it down. You can see we were bow float sideways, and then we bow float this other way, wherever you can reach. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. Right now, he can reach this area, so. We'll have him bow float this before we go any further. And the side there we did from the side. You can see he had already bow floated that. So this is the first truck, guys. We're just waiting on the second truck. Actually had plenty of concrete on this day. I didn't need uh, as much as I ordered, but sometimes that happens. So stand by, we'll hit the last bit, and then uh, I'll show you some of the finish work that we did on it, on the slab. So here comes the second truck in, guys, to finish up. We only needed a couple yards to finish it. I think I had three coming, and we only needed probably less than two. But we just... Got it right in there. The sump was good. We didn't have to mess with it. Um, the driver had it just how he wanted it. So same thing. We just raked it out and uh, me and Mike pulled it right to the door. When you get to these doors, guys, you want to make sure you really pay attention and get the door good because when the seal comes down on your door, you want the concrete really flat and nice right there. And then we actually taper from the door. The, where the door seal hits, we'll taper it out by hand. We'll dig that out and put a little bevel there so rain doesn't um, hit the door and go under the door and into the slab. Look who came back to play. <laughs> Mike couldn't stay away. He had to come back and help me finish this floor. Now he knows the place is flat. Look at that little guy. Get out of here. I don't want you in my concrete. Right now, Mike has his blades very flat and he's just going nice and easy. This concrete's drying real slow today, so there's no sense of uh, rubbing that machine up. It's just, this is a small job here, so we're just gonna take it nice and easy and she'll look really good when we're done. No sense of rushing. Yeah, there's a little wet spot in here. This corner isn't getting any wind or sun. We put a fan over there, but it might have blown into that corner. I think it's helping. Five o'clock, and we're still power cowling. I wish I put accelerant in this concrete today, but I didn't. Okay guys, here she is, 10 hours later, it's 6 o'clock at night. So that's what you got to expect here in the fall, central New York, if you don't put any chemicals or nothing in it. We poured it out at 8 and it's 6 o'clock now, so 10 hours later, come out real nice. Customer wanted it not slippery, 
So we didn't burn it in. Um, one, he's got a wife that's sick and they're gonna put a ramp here so that they can get her in and out better and they do not want a slippery floor. So um, we left it just a little bit whipped up and uh, that should sweep nice, but not be super slippery for them, for the customer. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next video.